Welcome to the heart of West Baltimore. My name is Kiefer Mitchell. I'm a senior advisor for Governor Hogan. <laughs> senior advisor for Governor Hogan. And the free time that he gives me, I'm a city resident. It's great to be here in the city today, where I had the privilege of serving as a member of the Baltimore City Council, representing the Coppin Heights area and other House of Delegates. I want to start by taking a moment to acknowledge and thank some of the governor's cabinet and the other elected officials who have joined us here. Uh, sitting with us in the front, we have our mayor, Mayor Pugh. We have our housing secretary, Secretary Ken Holt. We have our new Secretary of Commerce, Secretary Kelly Schultz. We have our Lieutenant Governor, Boyd Rutherford. And of course, we have our Governor, Governor Larry Hogan. Yeah. Cabinet members that are here, we have Secretary McCord of Planning. <laughs> Secretary Rosbowski of the Department of Labor, Licensing and Regulation. Secretary Padilla of Human Services. <laughs> Secretary Fielder of Higher Education. And we have our, we have our Superintendent of Maryland Schools, Separate Superintendent Karen Salmon. And we also have our Chairman of the Maryland Stadium Authority, Mr. Tom Kelso. We also have our chair, uh, our chancellor, Chancellor Corrette of the, Mar of the University of Maryland system. And the elected officials that we have here, Senator-elect Antonio Hayes, whose district we're in. Senator Bill Ferguson. Senator Shirley Nathan Pulliam, who just joined us. Delegate Keith Haynes, who's here. And we also have Councilman John Bullock. And Councilman Leon Pinkett, who's here. I want to take a moment to thank Osprey Property Company for hosting us here at Walbrook Mill. Walbrook Mill is a $29 million project that is home to one of Governor Hogan's signature initiatives, Project Core. This location is also a great example of the success that can come from investing in Maryland Opportunity Zones. The high, this high impact project offers mixed income, multifamily rental apartments, a food hall offering healthy food options and food in a food in a food desert, and adaptive reuse to promote workforce development. Today's announcement will allow the state to continue its commitment to attract new businesses and development in all regions of Maryland. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to our governor, Larry Hogan. Wow. Wow. Thank you all so much. Uh, what an exciting day. I can't believe uh, the crowd we have. I want to thank uh, all of our uh, cabinet and uh, all of our elected officials uh, for showing up. I can't remember a uh, time when we had uh, so many people come out for an announcement, so you can tell it's, it's a pretty exciting announcement, and we're all, I think, really uh, excited to be here this afternoon. Um, this, uh, th this is an exciting announcement with lots of parts, so we're going to try to get through it, try to keep up, because there's a lot of, a lot of moving parts to this one. Uh, but through our Project Core initiative in partnership with the city, uh, we have already uh, removed more than 2,100 blighted properties all across Baltimore City. And uh, we're, we're on schedule to eliminate more than 4,000 buildings by the end of this year. In addition, that's... In addition to these strategic demolitions, uh, we have, have also used state dollars, state tax dollars, to leverage 
uh, more than $630 million for redevelopment projects in Baltimore City. Uh, and right here at Walbrook Mill, as Kiefer talked about some of the excitement here, we're going to be transforming this site into a vibrant community hub, which will include 140 new apartments and townhomes, 9,000 square feet of retail and commercial space that's fronting right on North Avenue, another 32,000 uh, square feet of warehouse and light industrial space for local workforce development, job creation opportunities. Um, and as great as that is uh, for this community, and that's going to make a heck of a difference, um, we are also here today to make some uh, larger and even more impactful announcements which will foster an environment of economic opportunity, create thousands of new jobs, uh, revitalize and literally transform communities and neighborhoods all across Maryland that need our help the most. For four years, our administration has been focused on growing the private sector, putting more people to work, and turning our economy around. And that is exactly what we have been doing. More businesses have been opened, and more people are working than ever before in the history of our state. Together with the legislature, we enacted our More Jobs for Marylanders Act to incentivize more job creation in places like Baltimore City. And thanks to the great work of Secretary Kelly Schultz and her team at the Department of Labor, she's now changing jobs, but she spent four years doing a great job as Secretary of Labor, uh, we've been nationally recognized for our program, uh, programs on workforce development, job training, and registered apprenticeships. At our Department of Commerce, um, we're spearheading innovative programs like the Partnership for Workforce Quality and the Maryland Economic Development Assistance Authority and Fund. At the Department of Housing and Community Development, Secretary Holt and his team are working to transform neighborhoods and revitalize communities with programs including the Strategic Demolition Fund, the Community Legacy and Neighborhood Business Works programs. We've invested in major downtown revitalization projects, not just here in Baltimore, but in Salisbury, Cumberland, Frederick, and cities and towns all across the state. We funded historic restoration and economic development projects and provided critical infrastructure financing for renovation and construction projects from one end of the state to the other. And because of those efforts, we have ushered in a new era of revitalization and economic growth in Maryland. Now, I serve as the vice chair of the National Governors Association, and I will become the chairman of that association uh, this summer. Last year, we held uh, a session on the potential of the new Federal Opportunity Zone program. This exciting new initiative will provide federal tax incentives to encourage much needed investment in distressed and underserved communities across America over the next decade. We worked hard and recently won approval for 149 Maryland Opportunity Zones, including 42 Opportunity Zones right here in Baltimore City, far more than any other jurisdiction. In fact, we're standing here today in one of those opportunity zones. We got 25 opportunity zones approved for Prince George's County, seven in Wicomico, three in Garrett, three in Charles, and at least one opportunity zone has been approved in every single one of our 24 jurisdictions from one corner of the state to the other. Last summer, we held a Maryland Opportunity Zone Conference, the first state conference of its kind in America. We gathered all of the experts, all of the key stakeholders together to discuss how we could harness creativity and innovation to build partnerships that will ensure that Maryland's Opportunity Zones work effectively and profitably uh, to really drive economic growth across our state. Providing federal capital gains tax incentives 
is a great start, but it may not be enough to ensure the revitalization of many of these neighborhoods and communities. So we plan to do everything in our power to utilize new and existing state and federal programs, grants and funding sources, and to have all, all of our state agencies work collaboratively with our county uh, and municipal governments and the private sector to supercharge our opportunity zone revitalization. Our plan is to make Maryland's 149 opportunity zones the most competitive ones in America. Our goal is to give these communities, and more importantly, the citizens who live there, greater opportunities and more hope for a better future. <clears throat> so today, I am instituting an executive order to create the Maryland Opportunity Zone Leadership Council, which will be chaired by Lieutenant Governor Rutherford. Uh, they will be charged with developing a state opportunity plan that identifies goals for these 149 Opportunity Zones and identifies ways for the state to collaborate with local governments on state and local incentives and initiatives and ideas. We're also introducing uh, the More Opportunities for Marylanders Act of 2019, which will allow businesses that locate or expand in, in a Maryland Opportunity Zone to receive a 10-year tax credit for each job they create. We will exempt 100% of their state property taxes. We will waive all business recording, filing, and special fees. And we will provide an additional $6 million in tax credits for job creation in our Opportunity Zones. In addition to attracting new businesses and jobs, we will also provide $3 million to establish a program called Opportunity Works an exciting new job training program specifically for businesses that are located in Opportunity Zones. This will provide competitive grants for private sector workforce training programs uh, to take advantage uh, uh, and, and to take advantage of Maryland's competitive strength in the life sciences and in the cybersecurity industry sectors. We're also announcing today the investment of $16 million to create the Maryland Technology Infrastructure Fund. This transformative new fund will be housed and staffed by TEDCO, the Maryland Technology Development Corporation, and will be led by state, university, and private sector leaders. They will be tasked with creating a long-term strategic vision and implementation plan designed to leverage more than a half a billion dollars in anticipated private sector investment over the next decade. We are taking steps to ensure that Maryland's 149 Opportunity Zones will be at the front of the line for these transformative technology infrastructure investments. And finally today, we are launching the Maryland Opportunity Zone Information Exchange which is the first comprehensive interactive resource of its kind in the nation. It will serve as a virtual meeting place, which will track the latest Opportunity Zone information data and investment opportunities and activity, where users will be able to locate projects and businesses in Opportunity Zones and receive information on all the various financial and other incentives available at the federal, state, and municipal levels. All of the major actions that we're taking today are continuing our focus on creating opportunities, uh, putting people to work, and growing Maryland's economy. We are revitalizing and transforming Maryland's cities, towns, and local communities. And most importantly, we're renewing hope and providing opportunities for people in neighborhoods all across our state. Thank you.
before I introduce Lieutenant Governor Rutherford, I'd like to also acknowledge Delegate Cheryl Glenn of the 45th District has joined us here also. <laughs> At this time, we'll hear from Lieutenant Go Governor Rutherford. Thank you, Keeper. Good afternoon. You know, I want to thank uh, Mayor Pugh for being here, along with all the elected officials, our cabinet secretaries, and distinguished guests. And of course, I want to thank Governor Hogan for bringing us here today, and particularly for your vision and leadership that has made the growth and vitality of every Maryland community a priority of our administration. Um, and if you excuse me, I'm going to go off my script for a moment. I know the governor's probably saying, oh, no. <laughs> but he'll remember this. But a lot of people probably have not heard this story when, we, when he talked about Project CORE, uh, that when we were campaigning in Baltimore four and a half, five years ago, when we could ride in a bus together, they don't let us ride together anymore, uh, we were riding. We, Started over in West Baltimore, as some may remember, over in Rosedale area, riding through the city in East Baltimore, and the governor noticed the amount of vacancies that were in the city and said, there's something that we need to do about this when we become governor. And it was his vision that led to Project CORE. So I wanted to thank you, governor, and I think he deserves an applause for that. See, it wasn't, it wasn't in my script. I even wrote off topic. So, but I want to thank you also for the opportunity to serve as the lead for the Maryland Opportunity Zone Leadership Task Force. This is truly an exciting endeavor, one of which I believe will truly make a difference in these communities and communities that are in most need. As the governor said, it's a tremendous opportunity. There's been tremendous growth, <clears throat> excuse me, economic growth throughout Maryland over the last four years. But there are places in the state that have not done as well as the rest of the state. So the Opportunity Zone Leadership Task Force will be made up of state, local, academic, and industry leaders who will be tasked with conducting summits across the state and to allow local stakeholders to share information and discuss the possibilities for their Opportunity Zones. The task force will also create an online portal for members of the public to submit their recommendations. And the leadership task force will use this inf in information to develop a state opportunity plan, which the governor had mentioned, and will identify goals for the opportunity zones, provide recommendations for enhancing the zone incentives, as well as the identifying ways that we can collaborate with local governments to be able to fast track investment and development in these areas. In addition to the representatives from the departments here today, the cabinet level departments, we also have members of that task force will be coming from the State Department of Education, the Stadium Authority, the University System of Maryland, the Maryland Association of Community Colleges, the Maryland Association of Counties, the Maryland Municipal League, Maryland Economic Development Corporation, and the Maryland Technology Development Corporation. As you can see, it's a cast of thousands that are involved in this, but not quite, not quite a cast of thousands, but, but it's indicative of this multi-pronged, holistic approach that the administration is taking to truly lift up these opportunity zones and create positive, lasting, and meaningful change and opportunities for these communities. So I want to thank you again for being here and thank you for this opportunity. And thank you, Governor. And before I introduce our Mayor, Mayor Catherine Pugh, I'll also like to acknowledge Dr. Maria Thompson, President of Coppin University. And also a Baltimore City former mayor and now president of the University of Baltimore, Kurt Schmoke. At this time, I'll turn it over to our mayor, Mayor Catherine Pugh. Governor, first let me say thank you. I 
I can't thank you enough for all the work that we've done on the Opportunity Zones. They certainly have made an impact in Baltimore, and we know it will make a great impact in the future. And to the Lieutenant Governor, Secretary Kenneth Holt, thank you all for continuing to work with us. And I have to give a real shout out to the Maryland Stadium Authority, because we in Baltimore will build more new schools in the state in Baltimore City than the entire state of Maryland. And Governor, you should know that they've been on time and on budget. So thank you so much. And to also one of my favorite, sec I, I'm not going to do that because there are a lot of favorite secretaries sitting up here, um, you know, ones that I've served with, and Kelly Schultz, who's uh, moved on from labor to the Department of Commerce, who also certified, Governor, our police cadet program to help us to move more police folks from our city into the police department. Thank you so much. But let me just say how pleased I am to stand here today because it was back in January of 2017 when Governor, when I was at the U.S. Conference of Mayors and we were apprised to the importance of enterprise zone, uh, opportunity zones by the Enterprise Foundation and said, you know, we really need to get on top of this. And as you all well know, the governor has announced that Baltimore is 28% of all of the opportunity zones in the state of Maryland, and that happens to be 48, as he pointed, 42 out of 149. And that is because of the work that we've done, and more importantly, because of the openness of this state, recognizing the problems that our city is facing, and as the governor has already pointed out, noting that we had so many board up houses in the city. And I hope you all heard that number. The number was 16,000 board up houses in our city. And we are on target to tear down 25% of those board up houses by the middle of this year. So again, we want to say thank you. It is a lot of work that needs to be done, but I want you to know that we are on top of it. I cannot thank you enough for this announcement, this infusion of capital that will make a difference in how we continue to move forward on Opportunity Zones. You also know that we have put forth a neighborhood investment fund that we believe will work hand in hand with the Opportunity Zones. We've raised close to almost 75 million to work along with the state so that we can continue to invest in neighborhoods and communities that have been underinvested in for decades. <laughs> Governor, we also want you to know that we take this role very seriously in terms of what you laid out in terms of plans for Opportunity Zones. And so uh, I introduced you briefly to Ben Siegel, who is standing over there, who will lead our Opportunity Zones. He is our coordinator. He will make it easier for folks to understand the investments that will take place or the investment opportunities that can take place here in the city of Baltimore. I also like the fact that you've also created opportunities for people to grow their businesses in Opportunity Zones. Not only grow businesses, but to train individuals to work in those businesses. So again, we say thank you. Baltimore's Opportunity Zones are really closely aligned with all of our strategies for reviving and revitalizing our city. I also want to give a shout out to Secretary Holt, who has worked so closely. Y'all can give him a big round of applause. <laughs> Governor, I think we see Secretary Holt as much as you do. Uh, I know that Mr. Braverman, uh, our housing director, would tell you that we've been working hand in hand. And again, I know that the work that we are doing together will bode well for the future of our city. So we want to drive the investment into the Opportunity Zones across the city, and we look forward to the revitalization of these long, underinvested communities. We thank you for your commitment to Baltimore City, and you've shown it by your investment, by the creation of funds such as this, and more importantly, for pushing Baltimore forward and allowing us to continue to work together, and more importantly, acknowledging 28 opportunity zones in Baltimore City. I tell folks, almost the whole city is an opportunity zone. So we look forward to the growth and creation of businesses, houses, and all that comes with developing and expanding opportunities in Baltimore City. Thank you so much. And now I'll bring up Secretary Holt.
Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, <clears throat> the hallmark of Governor Hogan's administration is unity, bringing people together for common good, for common purposes. And uh, the best example is Project Core, creating opportunities for renewal and enterprise. And uh, it's really extraordinary that the federal government, through their incentives, have furthered that focus to bring together city, state, and municipal leaders under the Opportunity Zone initiative gives us an extraordinary chance to take depreciated assets, not just in Baltimore City, but throughout the state, and to bring them back to life again. In Maryland, we are the first mover. <clears throat> in Maryland, we have the projects and we have the businesses. And Governor Hogan has now provided that seed capital, that initiative to match with private equity across the nation to incentivize them to come to Maryland. And that seed capital is going to come from Commerce, DHCD, all agencies of government, and through this special task force initiative that he has established. And what is it going to leverage? It's going to leverage billions of dollars of private equity. That's cash that will come into this state. And we have projects that are dialed up right now. In Cambridge, 35 acres of waterfront, where the decommissioned Dorchester General Hospital will be relocating and be making available one of the most, uh, I think, prized waterfront properties in the nation. It's the second deep water port in the state of Maryland. In Frostburg, there is a potential to create a business incubator associated with Frostburg University that will help them develop new technologies, both in the sciences and, um, and I think that all throughout our state, we are gonna have an Indian head where uh, the Patuxent Naval Air Base is located Cybersecurity will find its startup companies right outside the gates of the Patuxent Naval Air Base. So if you look at Baltimore City, <clears throat> State Center, Pimlico Redevelopment, there's all kind of depreciated assets that are waiting for significant institutional money to come here. And we have the team. Kelly Schultz and her, her excellent group uh, at Commerce, my team at the Department of Housing, and all the agencies of government are working together because of the policy and the philosophy that Larry Hogan insisted. And that's everybody work together for the common good. So uh, this is maybe one of the most exciting press conferences. And um, I'm very proud to be part of the team. And I want to thank you so much for your leadership. And now Governor Hogan will sign the executive award. I didn't even know that was part of the show here. That's so. good. Glad I got a pen. Very good. It's official now. <laughs> and then uh, with that, we'd be happy to take a few questions from our friends in the media. Anybody have any? We've got a lot of. Any of these initiatives you announced today aim to address I think that's what the entire announcement was about and every single thing that we talked about today. Anybody else? Great job. All right. Big round of Sounds like we covered everything. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Well, I mean, it is one of the opportunity zones. Uh, we got the report from the stadium authority that talked about the cost that's involved, and it's something that, uh, you know, we've got to do a lot of hard thinking. We've got to talk with the city and talk with the owners of the track, and uh, but there's there's uh, hasn't been any real positive developments 
uh, to date, but we're very early in the process and we've got a lot of thinking that needs to be done. We got some good conversations. Going. We have a lot of talking to do. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, and thank you all so much for joining us today.